Well, hello there. It's been a while, hasn't it? Welcome to another Spong vidcast. Uh, the first under our new government, who are, of course, the Conservatives. But sod the boring old election. There's a distinct whiff of something in the air. Football! That's right, it's the Football Olympics, and you're invited. And with that in mind, one of the games I've been playing this week, possibly in my pants, comes from EA Sports. It's in the game. It's FIFA World Cup 2010. Now, usually, you'd regard such a title as being a waste of time, simply by being a rehash of previous FIFA titles. But this really ate your daddy's cash-in World Cup game. Just a quick look at uh, all the features kind of tells you that. You haven't just got the World Cup stadium and players. In fact, you've also got the qualifying round stadia and the 199 teams that were eligible for qualifying as well a couple of features that caught my eye included the captain your country mode you play as one of 11 representatives from your chosen national team and you try and vie for your manager's affections it's a proper laugh and it means that you tend to play very selfishly refusing to give the ball away until you can play that killer pass or smash the ball into the back of the net the scenarios mode is also very interesting you get to jump into famous matches that happened during qualifying you can avenge the poor luck of the Irish in the Henri handball match, for example. And EA Sports, it's in the game, are committed to produce further scenarios during the tournament through Xbox Live or indeed PSN. Wonderfully presented, as you'd expect from an EA Sport, it's in the game title. It comes replete with a couple of new skills and celebrations to give a hint of what's to come from FIFA 11. And it's lovely. New releases. Coming out very soon is the semi-futuristic racer Split Second Velocity, a racing game based on a television show where the aim of the game is to smash your opponent's time but also smash your opponent's head in at the same time by blowing up the racetrack you're racing around. I can probably count the number of driving games in the past that have got me salivating on one hand if I chopped off three fingers. But this one looks like it's got all the right ingredients. A, it doesn't take itself too seriously and B, OMG, look at that. Anyway, we'll be able to find out exactly what it's like on the 21st of this month. Coming slightly later in the year, roughly summertime, Blacklight Tango Down is a frantic first-person shooter with the emphasis on shooter and, and frantic and person and first as well and hearing there might be a sneak preview happening in London and using my skills as a pervert and a peeping Tom I managed to sneak into HMV and film a man who looked a bit like film star Ryan Reynolds telling a room full of dudes all about the game according to Ryan it's a game that takes place in a fictional futuristic Soviet state that's gone like a well mash up and the only way to save the world is to shoot a teenager from Rill in the face over an internet connection which is pretty standard for your modern video game I think it's fair to say. But, sod the story and the fact that it's being released at the same time as its own comic book, I actually managed to have a crack at it myself. Now, I'm a self-confessed terrible Call of Duty player, and yes, it turns out I'm pretty bad at this one as well. But unlike Modern Warfare, it throws you straight in. There's not so much kicking your heels in uh, lobbies and that. The emphasis is very much on action, and it plays all the better for it. For the gun and ranking perverts, there will be upgradable weaponry in 70 levels of command, but for someone who just likes to just jump in and jump out, it's shaping up to be quite a good one. And the real cherry on the top must surely be the pricing of the game. 20 euros, which is about 17 pounds at the time of recording. And Blacklight Tango Down will be out soon. I'll keep you posted. Start. Snitch says the Wildcats are planning to take over this patch of UC. Now, it wouldn't be XVG if we didn't cast our mind back, grab our rose-tinted spectacles from atop the fireplace, and have a look at a slice of gaming about Williams. Urban Chaos was a title designed by now defunct British developer Mucky Foot, not to be confused with the 2006 title Urban Chaos Riot Response. It was one of the first games on the PlayStation slash Dreamcast slash PC to feature something approaching a, a living, breathing cityscape. Two years before Grand Theft Auto 3 did it, uh, admittedly better. And very good it was too. You took the role of no nonsense police officer Darcy Stern. And looking back, how often do you actually see an African American lead in a video? 
video game, let alone a female African-American lead. It packed a lot into its modest game map, and you had to deal with suicide bids, hostage missions, and car driving sections. Coupled with the fact that you didn't have to keep your feet on the ground, you could actually climb across rooftops and do battle up there as well. Qualities that games like Crackdown and Infamous are still reproducing to this very day. All in all, a bit of a firecracker of a game, and one that really didn't get the respect it deserved. Right, it's that time again. It's bad video game box art. This week, five stinkers from the overworked game artist's easel. I'm sorry, Mum, I can't go into school today. I've got elf mania. In at four this week, another Master System Mare. I've got a secret command. The command will remain a secret until I get a mouth drawn on me. Come on, kids, punch your problems away every single time. Right, Phalanx, the hyperspeed shootout in space. Ah, the space tramp. In at number one, well, we've all had a romantic encounter at the dorm, haven't we? Nowadays, though, it'd be called Fingered at the O2. Well, so that's about it for another XVG. If you'd like to get in touch with the show, and indeed me, if you'd like a romantic encounter at the dorm with me, uh, just email this address. No pressure. Laters, haters.